English, Bible, Hebrew, whatever. The whole point is that you might get an understanding. That's what I heard. You know, you get to make sure you get an understanding. Because remember, those people who knew Greek, Hebrew, Latin, guess what? They miss Jesus. <laughs> you know? So so I don't know what you're saying here. Like, they missed him. They had more the same book that you're going back to study. They missed Jesus. All right? So... We, we, we don't worry about that. That's why we got Proverbs, you know, for when seven Jesus says, and all you're getting, make sure you get an understanding. That's what you want to do. You understand the times and seasons that you live in. But amen. amen. Let's get started. Well, welcome to From Inside Out Ministry. My name is Mr. Drew Braxton. Welcome to From Inside Out Ministry, where God wants to change you and I. Guess how? From the inside out, how? Spirit, soul, and body. You are a spirit. You possess a soul, mind, will, intellect. And you live in the earth suit. And if you, God was to call you home, if you're saved, your earth suit would stay here. And your spirit would go back from back to the Lord where it came from with your personality called the soul, which is your mind, will, intellect, and your emotions. Amen? So that's the way we are. We know our makeup. And we're still doing a series on who am I? The five questions of human heart. Who am I? Your identity. Where am I from? Your source. Where you? Where you from, guys? Where you from? What's your source? What's the name that call we call in the Bible that says is your source? Abba, which means father, which means source. Even when you call your natural dad father, you got that from Jesus. He allowed you to call your natural dad father. That's because that's where you came from. You came from the lawns of your father. That's the source of where you came from. So Allah means source. So that's where we are from. What can I do? What's your purpose? Jesus came and told you the things I do, you can do also. Why am I here? Your potential. This is when he let um, the uh, apostle Paul, Paul the apostle, he actually started telling you your potential and going out through the world and showing you how to do, uh, be a New Testament uh, believer as they start setting up churches and stuff and showing your potential, what you can do, and why are you here? Where am I going? That's where we're at now. This is part three of where am I going? Where am I going? This is part three. And tonight I'm going to show you some things from the Old Testament. And normally I do not preach from the Old Testament because I'm always talking about where new creations and the new things we do. But tonight, I mean, I'm just falling so much more in love with Jesus by knowing that Jesus was always in the Old Testament. And I want to show you. So it is May 4th. What did we say with that? When it's May 4th, what did we say? May the faith be with you. <laughs> May the faith. I know you want to say force. I can't go with force because that's a pan pan God. And it can be any type of God. But may the faith be with you. And that step just says faith in our heavenly Father. So may the faith be with you. On May the 4th. Okay, amen. Y'all ready to get brainwashed? Are you ready to get brainwashed? See, I have to say this radical stuff because the radical dark side has always told you you're getting brainwashed. Why are they were brainwashing you? <laughs> that's, ain't that funny? Oh, you over there getting brainwashed. Y'all go to church, this little man, he's over there brainwashing you. Don't let him do it. Let me do it. <laughs> Netflix, Hulu, you know, everybody's getting their brainwashed with some type of word or some type of subject or some type of agenda. Anytime you're listening, that's why God says, put a God on your ears, your mouth, and your eyes, because these are the windows that goes to the, the soul of the heart, which is the heart of man. He says, the heart of man is the candle of the Lord. He says, protect it. Don't, let, don't listen to everything. Some people are like, I'm so strong. I can listen to anything. Well, well let's, see. let's go back to the word. What did the word say? He says, uh, set a God <laughs> over your heart. You cannot listen to anything. Your subconscious, or watch anything, your subconscious mind alone is going to pick up and record this stuff. And later on, you're going to find yourself acting out. And you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I said that. Because you was listening to it over and over again. Probably at work, you know, probably in a grocery store. Sorry, you going to some game or something. And you listen to it, you don't even know it. Now, when I say so the God is, God says that for every word that uh, speaks against you, you shall condemn. The God is this. The Holy Spirit can convict you. That's your God. You're going to hear like, oh, my God, I can't believe that. You know, and you get rid of it. He says, cast down everything, every word that comes against the word of God. So you're like, oh, no, I can't believe it. Oh, no, I'm getting that out. So that's going to be your God. The God's not going to be, 
God ain't going to let me hear no bad stuff. <laughs> you do that with your kids. <laughs> That's your job to make sure they don't hear it, but not having it on. <laughs> you know, or be around it. Praise God. So we have to be certified what we call what? Bible thumpers. What does that mean? Certified Bible thumper? First of all, I want you to become a Bible thumper. And then I will certify you. <laughs> if you need your certification, come see me. Why? Because we're always going to go with this. What does the word say? Why, why is that so important, guys? I got a, I'm going to skip to the scripture right here to show you why. This is scripture right here. Romans chapter 3 says this, verse 3, three says, For what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? Certainly not. Indeed, let God be what? True, but every man a liar. So when people say stuff that God didn't say, guess what man makes them? A, you can say it. I only speak what God speaks. If God calls you a liar, he you know you're a liar. He says a fool says in his heart, there's no God. Anybody says there's no such thing as God, guess what God go call him? They are a fool. They are a fool. <laughs> you know, so I only speak what God says. See, God says, now, now, now see, this is why I got to make you a certified Bible thumper. Because you're going to know this, but would you say it? Would you stand up for it? Will you stand for righteousness? This is how you're going to be a certified Bible thumper. Because God says, don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed of this good news. This is good news. The rest of that stuff is poison. God's going to get trying to get his own people this into them. Now, they had it, walked around with it, told it, heard it, but it's not in them yet the way he wants them. They don't even believe it. So let's, so somebody said, I don't believe there's a God. To this, what God says to people who don't believe, says to this, this is straight foolishness. I don't expect them to believe. Well, I, 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 I protect the rights of babies dying in the womb. To them, they get crazy. Like, that's none of your business. I said, yes, it is. You kill them the life. And they'll start with anything else, and it's nothing new. I mean, since we last met, we had what? The Disney, the Disney crazy stuff on in local news? Oh, where they sit around and they're changed name, name new sins. I mean, the guy says, hey, look, we don't want no kids from K through five uh, learning about sex. That's too early. We don't want nothing about that. They're going to say, oh, oh, they say, don't say gay. That's not what the bill says. <laughs> they didn't say nothing about no gay. We said, we don't want our kids K through five learning nothing about sex. You know, but this is what the lies that we're living in. This world is on fire with craziness. I mean, I watched every Batman movie that ever came out, and I swear, I'm looking for Batman to swing down and collect all these crazy people and put them back in Arkham. Arkham is a place where they have the insanity people. All right, as a normal place, he collected them all. Because the same way they talk is the same way he used to collect them, or they used to do the same thing in this movie called Batman. And he came and got all these people. Now they are in charge. <laughs> They're, they, these people are in charge. Imagine getting that same asylum and put them in charge. And they look at you with a straight face. Yes. Kill this, that. And just, just crazy, you know. So us as believers, the reason why I bring that as a pastor, my job is to watch over the sheep and make sure the wolf talks. Because how do wolves come in? Wolves will come in through talk. How did Satan get in the garden? How did he get eaten to the seed? He came in with what? Talk. So you guys have to have more discernment than just listen to what they say on the surface. I see somebody outrage because he really thought that Bill says, don't say gay. If your mind is that weak, Satan's going to have a field day with you. That is not what people say. People can come out and make a lie about you anytime they want. And God says as believers, oh, get ready for it. He said the same thing they did to me, they're going to do to you. All that he says is make sure if they say that about you, that is not true. If it's negative. Now, if he says that guy really believes in the law and in the Bible, oh, that's true. I'll take it. Guilty as charged. You know, so I don't care about that. But if it's something negative, you know, normally they're going to talk about it. Because they will try to defame you. That's the new thing. They're going to try to make you seem like you're crazy. And you can have 50,000 people who know you ain't crazy. And they can come and say something crazy about you. And they actually pull some of the 50,000 to believe that. That is the world we're living in. This is why I want you guys to get in touch with Jesus, connect to the vine, and don't disconnect. Because that's going to be your only source in these last days. Deceptions on the all-time high. God says even the very elect is being deceived right now in the last day. That's going to be the highest thing of deception. Because people are falling for everything. 
Now how did they get in there? Praise God. Now watch this. Like I say, so God said, if God's word be true, and every other man a liar. Amen? So watch this. He who has an ear to ear, let him hear. Jesus used to always said this before he talked to a crowd because he knew that no matter what he says, a lot of people was not going to hear what he's going to say. They're going to hear something else. They're either distracted, their ground's not right, or they're there for the wrong reason. So he says, let those who have an ear to hear. So I'm saying that to you right now, let those who have an ear to hear. You know, uh, from the parable that he wrote, the parable of the sower, sower, it used to be one out of four. One of the, I used to be really upset because I used to be like, man, but I'm going to take my time and I'm going to explain it, break down. I don't care what I say. One out of four, we get it. You can have 20 people, you just go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and you're going to have somebody sitting there not getting anything uh, because that is a law that God says is going to happen. And many of the time, then he started talking the reason why. He says, because some of them have stony ground. Some of them are distracted. Some got too much world in them. You know, and he's talking about they have a different type of ground. This is why they came here. So when, I, when Jesus said, I have some things I want to tell you, but you cannot hear it, I'm thinking like, now come on now, you can just go ahead and speak it. They're going to hear it with their natural ears. But God's trying to get you to hear with your spirit because you're, you, you remember I first said you were a spirit, you possess a soul, and you live in the body. Well, if you don't hear things with your spirit man, you won't get revelation. And revelation is the only way for you to get the understanding of the spirit. Because the, Jesus said the words that I speak are spirit words. They're not natural words. This is why when a, a, na, a person who don't have the spirit of born again spirit, they hear you say something naturally about God. They'll read the same word and says, that don't say that. I remember I had, I had that happen one time. I was in the, at work and I, and I was reading the scripture. says one day is a thousand years and a thousand years is like one day. And then all of a sudden, so probably like, that ain't what that says. I'm like, it's plain as day. It says one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day to the, to the Lord. They could not even grasp that. That does not say that. They were not born again. And I'm thinking like, wow. That's why God has a scripture. He says it's going to be today. You'll be hearing and not hearing, seeing and not seeing. Now, the sad thing is that we got believers who are still stuck in that. And we're going to see why we get to the old. We're going to show you the reason why. 2 Timothy 3, chapter 3, and 1 to 3 says this. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. That's the days we're living in. All right? For men shall be what? Lovers of their own selves. Is that not happening? Covetousness, bolster, bolsters, proud, blasphemers. We cannot watch a movie. Me and my wife try to watch the last movie. I say, oh, the movie's going on pretty good. And here comes the blaspheme. They're going to say something about God. Uh, using the cuss word. Uh, so you can't watch a movie. Blaspheme is about to come out. All right? Uh, disobedient to parents. Wide open. We see it all the time. Unthankful. You know, that's what we say. Privileged. I deserve all this. Unholy. Without natural affection. Without natural affection. Truth breakers. They'll tell a lot of hard being. They'll keep their word. False accusers. Incontentant. Fierce. Despise the right here's the one to get them right here. This is the one that's getting us right now. This is what we're dealing with. Despise of those that want to do good. I don't want to do good. And I hate you if you try to do good. Man, what kind of person are you? That's the days we're living in. They hate people who are trying to do good. Are you serious? Back in the day, like, look, hey man, I hold it. That's you, man. That's good for you. I'm gonna go over here and do me. Not no more. I'm gonna do me, and you better do like me. Because if you try to do anything outside of me, I'm going to counsel you. I'm going to hate on you. I'm going to talk bad about you. Until you become me, it's going to be a fight. That is the days we're living in, guys. So therefore, I do not have a hospice ministry. <laughs> you know what hospice does? They make you comfortable until you translate into the spirit realm. You can find plenty of churches who want to do that for you, make you real comfortable until it's time to go. I am what you call boot camp, just like Jesus. How long must I be with you? You need to learn this. The things I do, you can do also. You're going to have to resist the devil. Then he will flee from your life. God has already done everything by grace. That's why him and God, God and Jesus are both sitting down because they're done. He said it's finished. And, and God in the Old Testament says it is good. And he sat down. And then he sent his son to do his finished work. He said he said it's finished. And he sat down. So what are we waiting on? Well, the Holy Spirit is in us doing the work of Christ, finish the work of what Christ did upon earth through us now. And he's telling you, you guys resist the devil. 
and he's going to flee. You guys lay hands and they shall recover. You, 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 you do it. He even told his disciples, he says, want to send them home and feed them? He says, no, you feed them. And then they start looking in the natural like we do. Who, oh, me? You start looking at yourself in the natural instead of what I like to do with myself as the what? Super natural. I never look to me. I look to God. I'll be just stuff and like, wait a minute, God told me, my father told me to do this, so uh, he must gonna, he must gonna show up and show out, so uh, here we go, <laughs> you know, and I have to take a, what you call, what they call it, a step of what, a step of faith, I have to do something, all right, faith without works is dead, dead faith, so I have to take a step of faith and believe, now when I take the step, now most people try to wait and say, well, well, when I, well, God want me to do this, so when I see him start moving, I, 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 that's when I'm going to move. It don't work that way. The step of faith is like, but faith is a substance uh, evidence thing. What? Not seen. You're not going to see anything. You hope for it. And the evidence is going to be what? There's going to be no evidence. There's going to be no, no seen. But you have to step out on the scene. And when you step, that's when God shows up. But the thing is, you have faith because you don't see anything. You mean to tell me, yep, you have a step of faith. And you're supposed to be practicing with the small things, faithful with the small things. I make you ruler much more. When you practice with the headaches and all this other stuff, you're building your faith up, and all of a sudden you get rid of the big stuff. But God's going to test you. You're going to get tested. Oh, big time. You're going to get tested. He's going to be solid during the test, as they say. The teacher is always solid during the testing time. Watch this. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Matthew 5 and 6. That scripture there saved me. Because I was like, once I realized. What God was asking of me, I was like, well, how the heck I'm going to, how I'm going to, you know, I, I don't know nobody. I'm not, I don't have the type of connections. I don't know what to do. And then I read the scriptures. God says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. More righteousness. More, I want to be right with you, Lord. What's your right way? What do you want me to do? What's the right position you want me to be? What's the right place? What's the right person I'm supposed to be meeting with? What's the right job I'm supposed to have? I want to be more righteous in those areas. So God says, if you hunger and thirst for more righteousness, I'm going to make sure that happens for you. So all I had to do is create a hunger. You have to be hungry for God. You know, so God, you see, not act. These are different, all three different ways that you have to come up to God. You have to seek him. That's one way. Then you have to knock. Then you have to ask. All right? Then he's going to have procedures how you even do it. God's plan versus man. Plan. The problem with religion is that it does the will of man more than it does the will of God. All religions do that. They're notorious. You will see them doing stuff for humanity. I mean, they got social working programs. Nothing wrong with them. They're trying to help people out. Nothing wrong with them. Now, the thing, the thing about it is you can do all that without checking in with God. All right? Now, don't get me wrong. They're generalizing. God says, feed the poor. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a church that feeds the poor. Cool. All right? Now, God's going to direct you on your path of how to do that and when to do that. He says, many other plans are man, but it's a large purpose that's going to prevail. All right? Because you could get ahead of God, but get behind God, and not do something that God tell you. And this is why a lot of people are messing up their faith walk right now, because they're doing these three areas that I always try to make sure you guys never fail into. You get in faith or presumption. Or straight foolishness. Mm -hmm. And I try to teach you what faith is supposed to look like. I say the first thing you have to have is a word of God, which is the most powerful one, or a word from God. Now, the word from God, watch this. If you got that first, we'll never go against the word of God. All right? It's the difference between uh, God getting a permissive will versus a commission will. Because most people feel like, well, I did, I went out there and did this, and they're thinking like, well, ain't, ain't nothing happened, or something did happen, they're thinking, well, God commissioned it then. I mean, if you did your life like that every time you did something, and it, it worked, see? I, see, the Bible says if I did that, it wouldn't happen, so I go ahead and did that. You did your life on that, Satan would have a field day. He got breadcrumbs and can tear you up, because he does it all the time. He comes as what? An angel of light. So he's going to string you along, and you're going to think you got away. You forget how God's system works. It's called the law of seed, time, and then harvest. So when I saw, if I saw a good seed, I still got to have time. If I saw a bad seed, I still have to have time. So I don't know, so when do you know you heard from God? When the harvest shows up. 
And you can tell you missed it. <laughs> when the harvest show, what, what we got people who are so always want to do something, stay busy. They plant seed in their time period. They plant more seed in their time period. They, plant, they have created a whirlwind. God says you sow to the flesh. You reap of the flesh. You've been sowing to the flesh so long because you haven't sit back and wait. That's why it says those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You have to sit and wait upon the Lord. I'm going to show you tonight where, where um, actually Moses waited for seven days for instructions from the Lord. And watch this. In silence. Seven whole days. <laughs> we can't get 70 minutes. <laughs> seven whole days. That's why I tell you, I want you to learn the court of the Lord. I want the courts of the Lord are not like my ways is not your ways. All this busyness and I got to do this for the Lord and I got to do this and I got my ministry. That stuff has nothing to do with God. In the course of the law, it's going to be a lot of wait. Just like when you go to the doctor's room, they make you wait. You're going to be in the waiting room a lot when the doctors want to see you now. You have to be invited in. I can't wait. I got this book I want you guys to read with me. Now, it will teach you about how this works. How to wait upon the Lord. Because it's not about you being all busy. See, Satan taught us to stay busy. And our brain has to be fed. Our hypothalamus has to be stimulated, stimulated, stimulated. So we think in busyness is production. And actually, it's counterproductive because in the course of the law, it's totally opposite. You don't never see them in the courtroom, even though I hate it. The courtroom's long. I've been in a couple, uh, not for me, but you know, on jury. And they sit there opening statement. Man, forever, taking their time. You know, creating a story, rolling it up. They ain't in no hurry. The course of the law is the same way. You ain't rushing in there and just, well, okay, I'm a gene in the bottle. Give me one and I'm out. No, you come bold in there, but at the same time, there's procedure, but it's not busyness. You're doing a lot of good things for God. God the one, that's from the tree. What, what's the tree that God says not to eat from? From the tree of what? Good and evil. We don't want good. We want right. That's the tree of life. See, the people did a lot of good things. It's like, it's like I remember one uh, minister was saying, uh, how, the, how uh, God was messing about giving away some clothes, and they gave half their wardrobe away, and all God actually did was that one, one particular item that they didn't want to let go. They did a screen of good things, but didn't do right. That's what we find ourselves doing. You need to relax. God has given us enough time. Let me show you. When I realize this, why you see how me and my wife op operate? Look at it. God has given us time for us to actually, first of all, have a, a relationship with him. All right, as an individual. In order to have a good marriage, you have to have two good eggs. So I got to have my relationship send a good egg. My wife got to have a good relationship with her, but God to have a good egg. Two eggs makes a good omelet, right? Then we have to have, be able to extend that love, the love that should have brought in our heart. We extend it into a ministry that we develop and we give it to others. We got time for that. We have to create healthy relationships while we minister to people and then have our own separate life at that. And at the same time, we had full-time jobs. We raised kids just like everybody else. You have 24 hours, seven days a week to do it. The reason why you can't do it is because you're not going to the Lord to figure out how to do this. The Lord said, he says, I'm the Lord of sleep. I'm the Lord of time. He said, I redeem the time. You know, he said, I redeem your time. But you're not seeking him in all our ways acknowledge him. When I realized this, I like, first I couldn't believe it. I was like, I, I didn't want it because I was so used to doing like everybody else. Oh, and, 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 this was, and this is what you do. And then, and then he says, look at you. You're doing whatever everybody says. Yeah, they say you're supposed to do this. And, and then you do this. And you do this, you do this. And like, he says, look at them. How's that working for them? See, they have taught me not to look for fruit. That's the worst thing religion ever did to me. And God says, you see, he says, the only place you don't look for fruit is when it comes to me. And everything else, you get upset. Something as simple as somebody's supposed to come to your house and work on your plumbing. They're late. Where's the fruit? <laughs> you know, you're ready to get upset. But when it comes to God, I pray for something. Nothing happens. Oh, well, call today. He's a liar, I guess. When he's telling you he's not. All the problems of God are what? Yes, yes and amen. amen. You act, all who ask will receive. But I blew all that off because they taught me when it comes to God, not that important. This is what's important. 
Thank you out there, man. Now, everything that you're thinking for is going to hurt you. Guaranteed. <laughs> everything you're thinking for, man, they're going to hurt. They're going to go in your hurt locker and they're going to pull out everything they can. They're going to hurt you. And here's the only one that I know that won't do that to me. On purpose. Everything you chase. Satan did that to you. Tricked you. Deceived you. I don't do that anymore. Chasing after the world. This world is not mine. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself to you, Lord. All I do, I say, God, tell me. Just you tell me what to do. And I'll do it. Now, I was sincere. I had a lot of people say that. And then they hear, what? You want? Oh, no. Forget that. I ain't going to be doing it. <laughs> The first thing you have to do is work on yourself. Because you're going to say, if, if, if this was fixed right here, things would be a lot better in my life. And if, if this was fixed right here, oh, things would be so much better in my life. And, and Lord, if you know, just this is one more thing right here. If you, you fix that, my life would be great. He says you think so, but I'm a God who sees everything. I know your thoughts are far off. I know your future. I know the plans. He says it has nothing to do with it. The problem is you. I needed to work on me. I couldn't see. I was looking with my natural eyes. When he worked on me, my spiritual eyes opened up from my heart, and I could see things for what they really were. And it wasn't as important as I thought they were. I'm like, oh my goodness. It's not that serious, guys. God, God has a plan. I'm telling you. His plan way but he says, plans to prosper you. Plans for you to be in good health. And then we run away from the plan. Okay, God, I heard that. But I'm going to go ahead and do my plans. Is your plan get you in good health? Is your plan prospering you? <laughs> now, prosper is not just money. Do you have joy on your face every time I see you? Yes. You know, do you have peace? That's your plan. Now, he just told you, my, my plan includes all of that. You know, and you, and you walked away from it. You know, so I had to learn that because I thought I was doing something good for God because everybody else was doing something good for God. And God says, do not eat from that tree of good and evil. Only eat from the tree of righteousness, which is life. Because if I keep eating from the tree of good and evil, I won't have time to do my assignment, which I was really put down here to do in the first place. I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss my assignment. Here's the problem with the tree of good and evil. Whether good or bad, people are going to pat you on the back. They'll tell you you're doing good. They're going to give you a title. They're going to promote you. They're going to even give you monetize some money. All the time, you could be right. You could be, you could be successful doing the wrong thing. I'm telling you. It was a hard pill to swallow. But when you get serious with God, I laid it all on my a living cycle. I'm, I'm going around the altar. I'm done. Whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. I don't care. You know, if people try to mess with you, you got to do it. I don't want to hear that. I, I, I'm giving it all. I'm in. And when you do that, you're going to figure out, like, wow. And you're going to see. And once he transforms you, he's going to see, now you're going to have my eyes. And you walk up, you start seeing the way the world is. And people are like, oh, my God. He said, that was you. He was doing the same thing. And you're like, oh, wow. You're concerned about what everybody thinks? Trying to please other people? People don't even care. They do anything. Nobody cares. Not like that. Not what you think. That's in your head. Go ahead and cleanse that. Let me cleanse that mess out of you. Nobody cares. You do you. Nobody cares what kind of house you got, what kind of car you got. The only person who cares about that is, watch this, you. You think you got to have that to be somebody. <laughs> you. <laughs> That's all in your head. Now, you can have things, but those things will have you because you chase them. And most of the things, if you don't do it God's way, are going to be attached to that tree of good and evil. So people are going to do some good things. They're righteous. They're supposed to be saved. They're going to lie, steal, and cheat. Maybe believers, this time of year, taxes, will lie and cheat. You know why? They don't trust God. They don't believe that God's going to provide for them. A little of this won't hurt. It will. Because you're attached to the Holy One. And you're dragging him like a prostitute. He says you land down with a prostitute when you do that. 
when you connect to the Holy One, you got, you got to stop all, you, you want to stop all this stuff. You don't want to hurt him. You don't want to hurt him. I'm telling you, that's, this is the level you have to get to. Let me keep moving. I want to show you how Jesus has always been there. The whole Bible is about him. The whole Bible is about Jesus. I'm like, wow. God is in no hurry to get us to heaven until your purpose is fulfilled. You know that. After from the body is present with the Lord. We know if we were to die right now, your assignment will be up. On earth, it is. Your earthly assignment will be up, and you will go be with the Lord. If you are born again, if you have accepted Jesus Christ in your heart, not your head, if you know that Jesus, that you want to follow Christ, not the historical one I believe he existed up on the planet. A lot of people are going to be surprised because that's as far as they got. They didn't know that. Yeah, they are like, yeah, historical Jesus, amen, sign me up for that. Yeah, I believe do is this. No. This is why he's he going to make sure that you understand the four. And you will see this in the Old Testament that he ascended. Did he ascend? Because I, I like it. When you, when you force people to read the word of God, and he, everybody says, do you believe that? And they say, yeah. I say, you believe that because we're here. I'm going to take you outside the world where they're going to dog you out for each one of these. You think this man got up out of the grave. They're going to dog you out. Can you handle it? Are you ashamed of the gospel? Oh, you didn't believe it? Oh, you just want them to go to communions that you just go around and you wherever group you're in, that's what you start saying. <laughs> it's going to come to fight. And see, right now, in the last days, God, I love it. God is drawing a line in the sand where you're going to clearly see darkness and light. You're going to see it. No more deception. God says the wheat and the tear have grown together, but now it's already starting to separation. You've seen that during COVID, how people was acting. Now you're going to see more. You're going to see a lot of people who are talking about their pretenders to the throne, and God's going to show you. Now I'm going to see you got the opportunity to stand with me or not stand with me. It is coming down the pipe. This is why I always try to get you guys to be a certified Bible topper from the beginning. I say, look, stay with the word. Whatever the word says, stay with the word. You know, because that's going to be your anchor. And it's not going to be popular. It never is. Jesus warned you. He says, now, now the same thing they did to me. Don't think, you know, the servant is not greater than the master. Whatever they did to me, they're going to do to you. They shame him. He thinks he's the son of God. He, like, he thinks he's the son of God. Guess who else thinks that? May guilty as charge. I believe the same thing. You believe Jesus? Yes. He was the son of God and the son of man at the same time. And, he, and you think he died and, and rose again. No spaceship, no spaceship. <laughs> See, who believes that? You can do that in church. Can you do it outside, outside when, they, when, they, when everybody around you? Don't believe none of that because they're in the darkness. You're supposed to be the light in the darkness. What does, what does light and darkness have in common? They have nothing. I, I wish people quit trying to, trying to blend in with that. If you are light, be the light. He says, you are sons and daughters of the light, be the light. But you can't sit there thinking they're going to agree with you. They're not going to agree with you. You have nothing in common. Darkness and light have nothing in common. It's never going to happen. You can try to be comfortable all you want. They're going to call you out. Just like they did Peter. There's one of them right there. That's one of those followers Jesus I heard him say once before. They brought their Bible to work. <laughs> Praise God. That day is coming. For God I live and for God I die. That's why Jesus told you now, if any man come out to me, let him give up himself. Let him die to himself, his plan, his will, you know, his thoughts. I'm, I'll tell you how to think. I'll tell you what to do. I'm going to tell you where to go. That's why I told you earlier. When I sung this song, I give my life away. I said, I sung that song. I you on the military. I give my life away. I did it. And that's the same thing that Jesus said. That's why I can relate to it. I get it. Like, wow. Really? Jesus, wanted, I thought you just had to believe in him. You believe in him as a believing thief that you can be transformed that one day you might go to heaven. But if you don't follow him, you're going to have every day down here on earth as you go to hell. All right, you're gonna have a hellish life down here. But he already told you the kind of plans. That's not the plans I have for you. I got plans to prosper you, you be in good and hell like that. Well, you're gonna be sick and die just like they do because you're not following Jesus. Not because you didn't believe in him, you gotta follow him. You got to give up your life. Faith is never going to be a belief alone. The new American Christianity somehow got that down. If you want Jesus and y'all just slip up your hand, it's never been just a belief. It's supposed to be an action. Your belief is supposed to prompt what we call an action. And belief plus action equals faith. That's why James comes and says faith without works is dead. He tried to get people to do that, but for some reason people just got stuck with, 
I believe, I believe. So I'm like, you're not doing anything. But I believe if I, if I fill out a resume, I get a job. But you're not filling out a resume. You, you, you're not going for interviews. Yeah, but I believe, I believe. That's what American Christianity wanted to mean. So you're in faith, foolishness, or presumption. And a lot of people are not in faith because they don't know what biblical faith looks like anymore. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Now, God's not bragging. He's trying to tell you, this is why you need to follow me. You're going to need to do my word because, look here, you're going to think there's a way, the Bible says there's a way that seems right to man, but it always ends in some type of destructive behavior. So here's God saying, but my ways... They're not like you guys. So when I tell you to do something, you're like, I can't believe God would do something like that. That don't make no sense. Love thy enemies. Pray for those who despise. They got trying to use me. He said, pray for them. Pray for them. <laughs> Let me read it again. For my thoughts, not your thoughts, my ways, not your ways. See, that ain't your way. You're like, look, I ain't going to be mean to nothing, but I'm going to avoid them. But, but just praying for them? I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about the praying for them stuff. See, that's what God's trying to tell you. This is the part that he says you have to, that's why you need to pick up your cross. The part of the package when you follow Jesus is now, now get your cross. You have to crucify your flesh daily because he's not going to want to pray for your enemy. He ain't going to want to follow and he ain't going to want to do my ways. He's going to look for comfort. That's the only thing he wants. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans and the thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for peace, see? God would you have shalom. I mean, everybody's looking for that. I, I guarantee you everybody will. I just, I just want, and he's they, they, so busy eating for that tree of good and evil, and he's just looking for peace. I'm eating, eating again for that tree of good and evil, the fruit of good and evil, fruit of good and evil, mixed up, messing their head up, because cause, cause righteousness is still bubbling up in them, but you're eating from the tree of good. And you should be for uh, uh, evil. And you're still doing it. And you're like, that makes you a carnal Christian. Because you're still eating good, you're doing good things and you're eating evil things at the same time. So it's driving you crazy. Why? Because righteousness is screaming at you and saying, this is not the tree we eat from. We got to eat from the tree of life, which is righteousness. And the only time you're going to feel good is when you do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. The Lord means what? Owner. The Lord means what? I thought I wanted to do that for a minute. Hold on now. God's sovereignty and well being. Not for disaster, but to give you a future and hope. There's always hope. There's always hope. Now, here's my favorite verse. We're going to get to it now because now my verse is here. This is the one. Isaiah, this is my favorite verse. This, when I first read this and then went to Ecclesiastes to, to figure it out, like, is he serious? He says, I'm the God like no other. Isaiah 4 6 10 says this. I declare the end from the beginning. What? This is God said. I declare the end from the beginning. In other words, he says, if you want to know what the future is, all you got to go is look at the past. I'm like, who does that? I've been taught in the natural world that you study history for you want what? Repeat history. And here's God telling you, I can tell you right now, they might not want to repeat it, but it's coming down the pipe. You have what you call inside trading information called the Bible. You can tell them what's about to come down and happen if you read my word. This is why Jesus can tell you, called prophesy. He prophesied, uh, telling you, foreseeing the future, what it's going to be. And he says, well, what does it look like? Well, the future is going to look just like what happened in the past. Oh, hallelujah. Declare the end from the beginning, and ancient terror from what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand. And all my good pleasure, I will come. God calls it good pleasure. When you on your assignment, doing what you're supposed to do, and everything that he is playing, whether he use you or not, whether you finish your assignment or not, he say, my plan is still going to get done. You might drop down. You might die and not know you had an assignment. You might die prematurely because she was eating for the tree of good and evil. You might die and not ever, you know, do your thing. He says, but I'll just raise somebody else up and continue it on because my good pleasure called my plan will happen. All right, so this is the way to happen. So our job is to make sure that, hey, I realize that I was born with for a purpose. I want to finish my purpose before I leave here because this is just a moment of time and I'll be in eternity. So I want to be, uh, make sure that I did what he says he's going to do. Look at verse 11 from Isaiah 46. 
from the east. He watch this. The watch with God. Here's God telling you what happened. From the east, I was summoned a bird to pray, and from a far off land, a man to fulfill my purpose. God says, I'll make nature start doing what I need to do to help get my plan. Remember, he had Elijah. He was fed by the birds. <laughs> Elijah was starving in the wilderness. God had the bird come and drop. Even in the children of the wilderness, it was uh, complaining about eating bread all the time. They didn't want to be vegan. <laughs> they wanted some protein. <laughs> so God had the fowls of the air, and he told them to build nets, and they threw the nets in the air, and they got up, caught all the birds. Even in the wilderness, the birds flew right into the nets. Just like Jesus. He went and went on a fishing trip with these cussing sellers who was not catching nothing in the middle of the day, just to prove his point, and says, hey, get to, uh, fish, stuck his fish, get in the net. And they all hopped in the net and said, boat breaking, net breaking, Boats, not one boat. He had to call all the other people out there, come help get this loads of fish. You know, so that, this is what God said. This is that's what I'm telling you. This is why you want to do the will of God. Uh, when I realized this, you know what? And this is where you start using now. The scriptures start making sense. I walk by faith and not by sight. You know, uh, I am righteous. I don't go by my feeling. And I had to kick that stuff in. All right. The reason why I had to do that because now I realize, you know what? If I want to do right, I'm going to thirst for more righteousness. God says, I will move heaven to earth and make sure you get right. All he needed me is to put my will in his hand and say, oh, Lord, I want to do whatever you tell me to do. And then I stop trying to figure it out because that's, that's the biggest thing that gets you in trouble. You're so used to running your life, you want to run it even when you call yourself getting with God. You can't run your life. You have to give that up. That's what Jesus told you to do. He says, now, if any man come after me, let him give up his life. Give it up. Stop trying to control stuff. Here's the biggest thing that will get you in trouble. Stop trying to manipulate and control people. That's going to get you in deep trouble with the Father. I do not manipulate people. That is a no-no. That's witchcraft. Why? If God would... Think about it. That's so far from God. You know who has the power to do all that? God. If he do that, he can make everybody on the planet get saved. Even though he made provision for salvation, God so loved the world, he gave his own son, that whosoever believed in him, but they have to act upon it. But he could have, I'm going to snap my finger like things and everybody, ooh, save all of a sudden, acting right and loving everybody. He didn't do that, so what makes you think you're going to remember to play people? Cut it out, that'll get you in so much trouble, and it will slow your assignment up. My job is not to manipulate people. My job is to inspire People, you know, provoke you to do the right thing, but not never, never manipulate you and try to put you in the headlock and make you do anything. That's witchcraft. You do not play that with God. That God, God would cut me off if I did that to you. I would never do that. No, no, no. Uh, so watch this. Here's God saying, I'm going to use the birds, the air, whatever it takes to get your will, the will done in your life. What I have said, I will bring about, and what I have planned, I will do. He's repeating it. He's telling you, like, look at guys. I don't know what you guys doing down on the earth, but I, did, I, I gave you a Bible that showed you, it's like, hey, here's the plan from beginning from A to Revelation, Genesis to Revelation, maps, whatever you want. He says, now, this is what's going to happen, and this is what I'm going to do, and this is where all my resources are going to be going forward towards. Now, if you get involved in that, you can partake of your divine nature and help me out with this. Now, if you decide not to, no matter if you do or not, this is what I'm going to do. So that means all the wasted prayers and crying and whining and you're not in the will of God, it's not going to make God move. Why? Because he's a king. He's a God. He's a father. And he's a king. And once a king decrees something, he cannot change it. And all the stuff that God did, he spoke from the foundations of the earth. He, he made up all this stuff. I'm going to have this. I'm going to make a Pastor Braxton, he's going to be married to Shanette. They're going to do ministry for him. He made up all this stuff before he even made the blue marble. Because he's in eternity, he can do this. He's not in time. He's in eternity, just, this is going to happen. And then, then he, he got the Trinity saying, yeah, but what if, the, what? but they can, if you give him a free, they can rebel. And Jesus says, well, I go and die for him. And, and God goes, well, okay, you're dead. They're in eternity. So all this stuff that happens just like this. This everything's made. Everything's thing. Everything is right. Jesus said, everything is 
finished. This is eternity. I know your brain can't wrap around this, but the Bible surely explains it that way to you and let you know it is a finished job already. You're in time carrying out his will, not your own. This is why he can sit here and tell you, I guarantee all the promises of God are already yes. Amen. Why? Because it's finished. That's why he's saying it like that. I used to like, how can you say that? Because people got free wills and they can go off and do this law. And I, you're like, bro, I ain't in no time. I'm in eternity. Time has nothing to do with it. Time is for you to measure your life. God's an eternal God. And he promised you what? Guess what? Eternal life as well. That's the promise of God. I have that. Because I accepted his eternal one, his son. But yeah, this stuff is done. So I'm trying to get people to realize, like, y'all have an assignment. Why, why am I more talking assignment? Because I went to church for over 25 years. Nobody told me I had an assignment. Believe God, brother. Get saved. Okay, got to believe God. Got saved. Now what? Well, you just do the best you can, man, and be a good, you know, come to church. And oh, okay, I do that. <laughs> got a job. I never knew I had an assignment. I'm <laughs> like, what? Everybody had an assignment. That's the only reason you're down here. If you're down here, and 500 billion cells that hit that egg out of all those swimmers, and you was the only one that produced, you have an assignment. 500 billion cells. I won the biggest swimming contest before my mama's womb. And now I can't even swim like that. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> I need to bring that memory back, Lord. Because the brother must have stroked in <laughs> to beat all those people. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Praise God. The key that's 1 and 9 says is that which has been is what will be. I mean, that used to throw me so well. Like, what? That which is done, it will be done. And there is nothing new underneath the sun. So when y'all see everything going in the news and CNN and all this liberal crazy stuff and even some of the crazy conservative stuff, y'all think it's new. Not to God, it's not. He says, I've seen all this before. Not only have I seen it before, he says, nothing underneath the sun. So it's not saying that he was in eternity and he said it's going to happen. He says, no, this has happened before. People turn themselves against God. We got believers who don't want to believe no more. We got believers talking the same way as the world and thinking the same world, saying the same stuff. He says, oh, yeah, yeah, that happened back in, uh, seen it happen. Been there and wrote the movie, really. <laughs> he literally wrote the movie, right? So I, this series called Back to Your Future, which is on YouTube, I, I talked about some of, have you noticed that all the words in the Bible have this prefix re. Remember repent? That word repent uh, means to rethink, go back, restore, redeem, reconcile, return. This is why I like why, because you're going backwards. You're going back to your future. You're not going forward. You're going backwards to your future. Now, your future is ahead of you, but it's the same time it's behind you. Messes with your head. Brain teasing, huh? Yeah, your future is in your past. You want to know what's going to happen? There's nothing new underneath the sun. Whatever existence has already been, it's please that's the 6 and 10. Where areas that's already have been named. This is the thing. Name long time ago. It's known and it is known what a frail being man is, for he cannot dispute with him who is married to him. Says so God says, He says, God's telling you this is the way it is. And you get these people like, I don't believe in your Bible. Don't bring the Bible up in this conversation. Well, we think it's the reason why the earth rotates and blah, 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 and do all this stuff. So they figured it out. And by observation only. Now, God says, I give you inside trading information. You don't have to do anything about observation. You can go and just read it. First-hand information versus observation. You know, but God says, you know, this is what happens. And Job, it talks about the earth, everything. All this stuff is all in the Bible already. And all the people are like, I don't believe the Bible. So we're going to try to figure it out so they get half off and half wrong. One thing I hate is when they start yanking stuff out of your body. What's that for? I don't know. You don't need it. It's like somebody go. You like somebody go in your car store. You're gonna drink a, a wire. You. I don't know what it's for. <laughs> they did it to your own body. You know why? Because you're dealing with people of dark. They don't believe in God. We believe we created, made in His image, wonderfully made. Everything He put in or inside of me was made with and for a purpose. Yes, I may or may not cannot live without it, but when it was inside of me, it had a purpose. A dark person believes there's no hope, there's no purpose, it's an accident. This is why they do that to you. This is why they talk to you that way. 
They have zero. They're dark. Their eyes have been shut. So the only thing they can do is by their flesh. They sit there and look at things and say, I've seen a man do that. See, but us, we can have a discernment. I've seen him do it, and I know why he did it. That's the difference between a supernatural person versus a natural. Discernment. Because you, know, you can discern the person. Not just see what they say, because, you know, if you just observe a person, they will trick you. People are good. They're faking it. And God says, no, you, you, you ain't going to use that alone. You're going to use discernment. You're like, yeah, they say all the right things, but uh, some of uh, my spider sisters went off. <laughs> you know? And you can feel it. That's the way you're supposed to live. That's the way the first Adam lived. That's why God says, now return to that. Rethink the way he used to think. You have a discernment. You don't just sit there and listen to I tell you all the right thing. Well, they checked every box and said the right thing. And then the Bible says the last thing is to follow what? Peace. To follow peace, right? That's the last thing. If you have no peace in it, God planned and revealed his genealogy. Now, we talked about this last week about the genealogy. I'm not going to go over that today because we went over the last time we met and recorded this. We talked about how we showed Jesus plan in the genealogy of just the names alone. So we're going back to that. So let's let's get started. I'm going to show you again. Check this out. Check this out. Now, this is Moses after they got, you know, everybody knows the story. They crossed the Red Sea, pulling from the Egyptians, which is the form of the world. God says, first thing he does is he saves you. He pulls you out the world. world. And the next thing he says, if you got saved, the first next thing I want you to do is get baptized. Be baptized in the Red Sea. Everything that we once did before, we do again. All right? And he's showing the pictorial, this is what's happening. All right? But they missed all that. They didn't see it. You know? All right? But well, watch this. So now, when they used to set up camp, he said, set your camp up this way. Build me a tabernacle and have the tribe set up this way. When you look across it, what does that look like? It looks like a cross. They had no clue what that meant. Old Testament concealed, New Testament revealed. You look at the answer because you're a New Testament believer. You say, oh, look, that's the cross. When they were setting up camp, it's just something they had to do. That's how it is to a worldly person. I just want you to see how it is to them. You clearly seen the cross. They like, I don't know, I don't know why they want to do it. Why don't they switch around and go the other way? You know? See, that's where the world is. They can't hear. They can't see. It has to be revealed to you. If God don't reveal himself to you, you won't see him. Remember, he's in the room, but if we don't invite him right, he won't show up. You know, he's everywhere at the same time, but yet he's telling you, seek me, seek me, knock, knock, seek me, seek me, knock. How can you be in the room when you tell me, seek me, seek me, knock? Because he ain't going to reveal himself to you. Right now, I want him to reveal it to himself to us in the Word. I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Who remember the verse with that verse? Is? What verse is that? Nah, I am the way to life. Was it? John what? 14.6. You said it to 14.6. Close. Don't forget it now. John 14.6. I am the way, the truth, the life. Why is Jesus saying that? When you don't have revelation, you're going to do Jesus going to go with the audience. Watch this. Mysteries of Jesus. Watch this. Mysteries of Jesus in the church in the tabernacle. What? Jesus and the church in the Old Testament? I thought that was a new thing. Jesus and the church in the Old Testament. Let's take a look. The Bible gives, uh, Bible gives the subject 50 chapters on the tabernacle. 50 chapters. 50 chapters on the tabernacle alone. Ten Commandments, one. <laughs> tabernacle. You think it's important if you gave me 50 chapters on this subject? 50 chapters on the subject. The pattern, the construction, and the service that's ran through it. Because it's church service, basically what it is. It was the first mega church, by the way. It was the first mega church. Three million, <laughs> million people are part of that congregation. <laughs> Three million. Watch this. It had uh, five names that is called. That means the tabernacle. One is called the sanctuary, which means holiness. Tabernacle, of course, that means God's dwelling place. 
It's called a tent also. A temporary dwelling place. You like that, don't you? Because if, if, you, if you get your wheels turned, you realize that's the same thing he says about you. You're a tent made not by hands, was Jesus, and he says you are, he refers to your body as a tent also. Which means what? A temporary dwelling place. I'll show you the end from the beginning. All right? He, he refers to your body as a tent also. So it's a temporary dwelling place. You're going to get a glorified body. This is not. Tabernacle of the congregation. That's where God met with his people. Tabernacle of the congregation. Five. Tabernacle of testimony. The Ten Commandments were there. That's why it says the Tabernacle of the Testimony. What Testament? The Testament was the Ten Commandments because it was inside the Tabernacle. Now, let's go through some, uh, uh, one more thing. Here's another thing I thought was interesting. It says the Tabernacle lasted for 500 years without a rebuild. 500 years without a rebuild. When God builds something, if the Lord built the house, <laughs> let the Lord build your house. See, when God says, I said build something, it's going to last. You know, built to last. All right, 500 years without rebuild. And the only reason they stopped using the old one, because they built a permanent once they got to the land, the temple. But no rebuild. Once they built that bad boy for 500 years. And now, you know how fungi is, right? That's the worst thing. Fungi is not built to move. It's built to sit. You got one big move, maybe. You start moving around for a part and part, you're about to tear it up. Well, the tent, remember, the tabernacle is made like a tent. Tear it down. Pack it up. Let's go. <laughs> All right? So, you imagine somebody tearing down, setting up a tent for 500 years and they ain't tear up? No rebuild. I'm telling you, God is good. I'm you, this is the kind of God we serve. Three million people surrounded. Why? Let's watch the workers. 22,000 men served inside the tabernacle. 22,000 men. They always had a men meeting. <laughs> always. <laughs> Has 22,000 men serving inside. Now, let's get, now, this is the part I really love and I thought was wild and out. Because when you look at this, because like, I used to see this back in the day, people like the tabernacle. I was like, okay, that's the Old Testament. The people did it. What they got to do with me? But when you really get into this, and I told you in the scriptures, and I just had you read John. John 14 and 6, and here's Jesus telling you, and he's telling them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This gate right here was called the way. This door right here is called the truth. And it has another door underneath here called the life. So he's telling you, the people who were setting this up and tearing this down for all the years, that's me. That's me. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And they know. That's why they got mad, because they knew that he was saying, I'm the way to God. I'm the way to God. That's why he says, I'm the way. He's the truth and the life. This is why the Pharisee was so hot. This is, I'm the way to God. No man comes to God except through me. That's what you just got to read. That's what he meant. That door's called the way. That door's called the truth. And the one before the Holy Holy is called the life. So everything, everything that God, I'm telling you guys, from the number of poles to the number of straps, this is how detailed God, the way that's tied, what's it made out of? All, all Jesus. Every single detail. 50 chapters of Jesus and the church in the Old Testament. It's like you have Jesus and the church in the New Testament. This is why I tell you, we really don't get it when God says he needs to go and study. The tabernacle is, is phenomenal what they did with it. For instance, the gate, the colors on the gate represents Jesus' ministry. It has the colors of, let's see, blue, purple, scarlet, and white. That's the offices of Jesus. The blue, purple, and purple is talking about his royalty. The blue is talking about he's the son of man. All that's why the colors are you. The colors are painting you. Basically, it's telling you this is the whole gate is Jesus. When you first get saved, the first person you meet is Jesus. He's going to meet you at the gate. I stand at the door. He's going to meet you at the door. All right? Then the next thing you're going to get to is this altar right here. All right? So the altar of sacrifice, the work is the cross. Once you meet Jesus, 
then you're going to go to the cross. All right? You meet him, somebody preaches and says a ceremony and says, look here, I'll be talking about God. If you want, Jesus, he may have a ceremony or say, not a ceremony, but a sermon. And then they say, hey, you like to accept Jesus. Now, you already met him in your heart because the sermon, by the words that they speak. That's what Jesus says. You've been washed by the words that's already been washed by us. All right? So he's been washing with the words. So he, here's Jesus coming in and telling you, hey, once you meet me, the next thing you need, you need some blood. You can't go no further if you ain't got no blood. You got to have a blood coming. All right? So the next thing you go in, it says the author of sacrifice, the work of the cross, the four horns, which you can't see right here. They spread the blood here, 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 and here. These are called the four corners of the earth. Jesus died for the whole world. Everything meant something for him. John 3, 16 is right there. The Lamb's blood shed for the four corners of the earth. All right? Everything's in there. All right? And here's another one. It says, um... He reconciled the whole world back to himself. The wood is made of Akadisha wood. A uh, shimit wood. Shittim wood, they call it. Uh, Akadema wood. Now, this thing is made with wood, but it's laced, layered with brass. Layered with bread, indestructible blood showing that Jesus' bones will not be broken, just like this one, indestructible. But the brass represents, always represents suffering. And that's why the brass is there for suffering. All right. The lever made of mirrors. Remember, I talked about that because I'm always on you guys when we take communion. Because, you know, the people don't teach you about righteousness. They're like, well, you've been made righteous by Jesus. Yeah, but then there's a walk of righteousness you have to do. And this is what messed them up. This is the walk. They've been saved too. But then the next thing they had, this thing is made completely of mirrors in the background filled with water. Because the word is like a what? Mirror. When you look at yourself in the word, it's the only one that discerns you and find out who you are. That's why you see your reflection of you in the word or in this mirror. So the guys just come and wash their hands and they look in that mirror and reflect them and see if they were cleansed. Now they did natural cleansing, but God makes us do spiritual cleansing by the word. He says, make sure you cleanse yourself up by the word before you go into prayer. Because this is what you ain't yet prayer yet. This is things like, first of all, you have to meet Jesus. You have to have the blood. We have to be cleansed. We ain't eating it. We are not even in the tabernacle yet. Um, watch this. It words also stand for the level stands for God's word, sanctification, and separation. This is why I tell you a lot of people like everybody prays, but everybody prays don't go nowhere because of the system, the order. I tell people all the time. I say, you know what? The biggest thing I know about the body of Christ is they get things out of order. That's why they do good things on the evil tree instead of the right things on the light tree. That's out of order. And then they won't do, continue to do what God told them. This is the order of God, the order of the courts. It's never changed. Everything they did naturally, we do spiritually. We don't come and wash our hands in the mirror of bowls now, but we take the word and we go to God's word and say, God, if I have anything in me, sins, omission, or commission, could you forgive me of my sins and cleanse me right now before you go in and go to the next level? You're doing it spiritually. Everything they do naturally, you had to do spiritually, all right? They did it naturally. They had to come to this gate of Jesus. We had to open up a heart of Jesus. You know, then we had to go in and, and they had to take an animal, uh, 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 sacrifice the animal. Jesus was our sacrifice, so we accepted the sacrifice. Then we had to go to the Word and confess our sins. He's faithful just to cleanse you from the unrighteousness. Same stuff. Same stuff, all right? So the next thing we got is... The way, uh, when you get to the tabernacle, let me, let me back up because I got to help you out here. The tabernacle is actually called this part right here. The olive court is what we call it right here. And this is why we past came with this idea that people get stuck where? At the door. Which one of these is the cross? That's the cross. I said for you. <laughs> Which one is the cross? This is the cross. That's <laughs> what blood is sacrificed. All right. What did I say people get stuck? Oh, they met Jesus. I believe in Jesus. He was up there. I said, where did they get stuck? At the back door of the cross. This is where they get stuck. They never even get and taste those seeds. The Lord is good. Show bread, revelation, knowledge of the word. This is where it called, this door is called what? The door of truth. See, they're not even feasting on truth. They got stuck at the back door. Because they told them, you accept Jesus, you're good. 
You can do it's all about the cross, boy. It's all about the cross. They stuck here. Everything's about the cross. Then God got all this other stuff in here that brings you into a deeper, you talking power for relationship with God and operating the way Jesus did. All through the system. But they get stuck at the back door of the cross. Because nobody can confess their sins, because remember that also stands for you need to be separ separate yourself and also you need uh, to um, uh, sanctification and separate. Be sanctified. Sanctify that I set myself apart for the Lord. I no longer do what I want to do. I do only what God does. I'm setting myself aside for that. So you have to do that with your own self and if all for you go to the next level. Now once you get into this building, you see what this thing is made of. It represents Jesus. Badger skin was the outer appearance of it. It was ugly looking on the outside. Ugly. They made it. God did it on purpose. Everything he does went for a purpose. Badger skin. It's not that pretty. All right. John 14, I'll tell you why badger skin. Badger skin, why? Because that's where the gospel is. When, when the worldly people see the gospel, it's ugly. The good parts is where? On the inside. <laughs> Until you get on the inside of this thing, you really don't get the gospel. To you, it's an ugly thing. You mean I got to stop? And I got to stop. All they think is loss. Like I used to. I'm going to lose. I'm not going to gain. It's ugly to them. Then you got the ram skin. Uh, dyed red for the substitutionary sacrifice. Ram. Why ram versus lamb? Ram showing you that this was a strong person who's going to take on our weaknesses to the cross. He was perfect. We one was weak. So the ram is ram tough, just like the truck says. He's strong. So therefore, he's going, he's strong enough to take our weaknesses to the cross. That's why it's dipped in red dye showing that he's going to be to the cross. The next thing we got is wooing goat hair. Curse and suffering. That's what that's for. The, the wooing goat hair. Each one, these are layers now. All right? Because it's pitch black darkening. The only thing you can see inside here is if it went for the candlesticks, a lot you would have seen that. With these layers, it's dark. They're in the middle of a hot winter, you know, I mean, summer desert. So it, how you get light out? Well, all those layers, ain't no. The only light in there is the light of the Lord. The glory light and the candlestick light. So I'm showing you, right? And then you got this right here. They actually woven cherubim, angels, on this layer right here. So when you walk up, you'll see cherubim all on the ceiling as you walk up. All over the place. They made this, God says, this is where heaven and earth meet together. So that's where the temple was made. When you walk in there, it says heaven and earth shall pass away. Uh-oh. Come on, Revelation. Heaven and earth shall pass away. They was talking about the tabernacle. The temple. When Jesus says in three days it's going to be destroyed. Heaven and earth pass away. Because that was the place that they met. Heaven and earth met together. That's where they had the water, which is the sea. <laughs> they had the cherubim, which is heaven. <laughs> you know, they, they had everything there that represented heaven and earth. This is what God can tell you what? You can have what? Heaven. It gets a lot deeper, guys. It's just that you got to study. You can be excited about reading the word. None of the words bore to me. Because every time I pick it up, I'm going to find stuff like this. Because my heart is open. I don't read with my eyes anymore. I can read with an open heart and see that Jesus is all throughout this Bible. Unlike the church and Jesus in the Old Testament. If you told me that you are like, no, he ain't. We're in the New Testament. Jesus didn't die at the cross, you know, he crossed over. You talking crazy. Now they had a, a type and shadow. No, he was there and he told them that. I was the one that was there. I was the one that was there. And you know the time you did it, I was there. Jesus has always been around. And they told them around. Just like, guess what? I'm told them around. <laughs> I'm doing the same thing they are. Do you not know now that you are the what? Tabernacle. Or a temple. Of the Holy Spirit. You're the same thing. They told them around like this. He could be up on you. But one day he's going to be within you. Do you not know that you're not the tabernacle? Now you see what they're doing? Now he's telling you, now you see the ritual. Y'all call it ritual. That's old ritual. God's telling you now, you confess your sins on faithful just to cleanse you. Why? Because he's inside me now. And I still got to cleanse myself before I go to prayer. Inside of me, same stuff. 
Same stuff. I'm going to meet with Jesus today. I'm going to remember his blood. Do this in remembrance of me. And we take communion. If you're faithful, it's just to cleanse my sin. This is all going on inside of me. And you. And I'm entering to the holy place. This is what he's talking about. Those who wait upon the Lord. You ain't got to the prayer yet. You ain't got to pray yet. Because <laughs> when you pray in the spirit, you got to be in the spirit when you pray. We're not there yet. This is the olive oil. This is all fleshly stuff. Dealing with the sins of your flesh. All this stuff for you. Jesus, sacrifice, and you confessing what? Fleshly, flesh. We're dealing with the flesh. Now we're going to go to the truth and we're going to start dealing with the soul. Renew your mind with the word of God. Where's the, where's the mind at? In the soul. That's where we're getting at. We're finna get to the soul. And a lot of people have not dealt with the soul. At all yet. Now look at that. Look at that. The five pillars. Look here. I'll tell you. Five pillars on the door of truth represent the fivefold ministry. Apostle, prophet, preacher, teacher. Evangelist. People don't want to go to church. Guess what? Fleshly. You never get into your soul. Remember the soul, the soul, the way through your soul and getting your soul is through the fivefold ministry. You're going to have to get a book. You're going to have to watch a video. You're going to have to sit underneath somebody for in order to get an understanding. If you say, oh, I just did about fleshly. Stuck at the back door. I can read the Bible by myself. Out of order. God says, here's the order. Jesus covenant, confess your sins, and enroll yourself in my school. Out of order. I told you when I read this stuff, like, man, I've been spending all day with Jesus in every scripture. It's ridiculous. I'm like, man, you wonder why if my people will call by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face. All we got to do is get all that we still good tree, evil tree. Tree of good and evil. Not the tree of righteousness, but the tree of life. You know, we, we just don't get it. I'm like, wow. Now watch, the, here's some of the pieces that you're going to see inside when we get there. I just want to give you a close view. Inside there, you got the table of showbread, 12 loaves of bread, olive oil. You got the brazen level that I showed you out there, and the candlestick. Like I said, if you went for the candlesticks, you can't see. They also have little lamps near the bread where they light these lamps right here for the hell light. Because it's pitch black dark in there. Until those lights are lamp, these lamps are lit, you won't be able to see anything in there. You got the table of incense, which represents prayer. So you get to the back of the door before you get in the holy holy. You enter into his gates with thanksgiving, force with praise. <laughs> see how he said that everything means something. It's not just scripture. He was actually talking about it. the ark of the covenant. You know, with the angels. You see the angels' wings right here. The angels' wings are. And that's the Holy of Holies. And that's where they had to go and sprinkle the blood. Inside here, we had the Ten Commandments, Aaron's rod, and something else. Three things. But anyway, that's where they sprinkled the blood once a year in the Holy of Holies. And they, if they didn't do it in order, they had a rope tied around them. Only the high priest can go there. All right? Uh, God has order. And that's the church. They really didn't, they don't do order. They don't do order very well. They just don't do what they want to do, right? So here we go right now. We got 22,000 people working this. They can go into the truth. But the next chamber, only the high priest can go into the next chamber where Jesus was guarding it. And if he didn't do it right, he was done. I mean, he had, uh, he had a rope on him. And the garden that means God has protocol. And yet they had a rope tied around him. He had bells on him around his girdle, girl, around his outfit. And they can hear him moving when he went, because he went here. He went in there. And everything he has unco unconfessed sin. Had to, if he had to confess his sins, if he didn't have unconfessed sins, he can drop dead in the presence of pure holiness. This is why God says, if you confess, though, I can cleanse you and bring you from unrighteousness. I'm good. I don't care. Ain't nothing wrong with me. See uh, that right there? This is why we're not seeing the power of the church. These people didn't play. This is why they see more power in us without the Holy Spirit inside them versus the Holy Spirit coming up on them because they had to do this stuff in order. We ain't got New Testament Christians. We don't believe in order. Can't nobody tell us nothing. We don't want to listen to no one. You know, so 
This is what God says in the end times is what happened once before, it happened again. The reason why I'm bringing it up, not being mean to Christ, I want you guys to know that God's going to get his house back in order. He says, judgment starts in the house of the Lord first. He's going to clean the church up. We will see power before we get raptured out of here. But the first thing you're going to see coming is order. So you're going to see a lot of foolishness happening towards the end, a lot of false prophets. You see them now. A lot of people quitting the ministry, getting out, getting caught up. That stuff got to get cleansed because it's not God. It had the form, but it's not the power. It's not God's order. So now you get inside this thing. I'm telling you, I, will, I can tell you about every truffle, everything. It all has something with Jesus, but I'm not. But we're going to talk about the candlestick. It's where you get to Revelation. That's the illumination of the word. Now we're in the word chamber, so you know that's my favorite part. This is where you get revelation knowledge. You're not out here in the flesh hearing the word like you used to. And like, ah, the Bible says this. And say this, da, 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 da. that's all you're doing. Fleshly, fleshly means not, not penetrating nothing. Just religious rituals. Because you're in the flesh. When you get past the fivefold ministry in this room, you start getting revelation. Oh, that means, oh my, and that means to now all of a sudden you got started because you're getting revelation. Because now it went from your head and it went to your spiritual heart, which is the mind of Christ where he leads you, and you actually can hear something now. So, so you, got, you got the candlestick. The last stand is illumination and revelation of truth. It's going to illuminate the word and it's going to give you revelation of the word. All right? Then you got the showbread. The bread of, it's called the bread of presence. And watch this. The bread of presence was sprinkled with frankincense. Because the word of God, because <laughs> frankincense makes the bread taste, watch this, sweet, just like the carrot patch. And then the word is always sour. Persecution is the solid part of when you speak the word of God. The word of God will get you persecuted. So they spread it with frankincense, showing you that, hey, it's going to be sweet. As they can say, it's going to be bittersweet. <laughs> but you know all this revelation of the words. It's not going to get you pat on the back of the time you do the true word of God, walk with God. That's why they spread it with frankincense. Representing, that's what the word does. It has the power. You know, a double-edged sword that's going to be sweet at the same time you be sour because you get persecuted for the word. Because I got you guys right now learning how to to what the words say. What the words say. Hey, what do you think about people doing this and they have their rights and do this and this and this? I said, what do you think God said about that? They don't like to hear that. That's for me. I gave up my life. I'm a living, I'm a living sacrifice. All right, I'm like, look, I don't care. Hold up. If I don't know, let me go check. According to my constitution or my heavenly father, he don't think that's a good idea. And you roll with it. Can you handle it? Can you stand the truth? Now watch, 12 loaves because the word of God is sweet, then better because it brings persecution. Taste and see that the Lord is, a lot of people haven't done it yet. They had religion, but they have not tasted. See, once you taste and see that the Lord is good, I won't have to prop you up. You'll be looking for it. This is what happened to me. Man, I got a taste of this. They're like, you kidding me? The word works, just like God said it was. He'd show up and show up in my life. All I got to do is just yield to him with my spirit. Once I taste the see that the law is good, it's over. Like I said, most people don't make it to that room. They don't stay. Taste and see that the Lord. That's the feasting of the word. All right? Now look at here. Here you got the illumination. It's word, 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 word. Illumination of the word. Revelation of the word. Man shall not live by bread alone. But every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then you go to prayer with all that word in you. Because if you go to prayer without no word in you, <laughs> your prayer won't be effective. The effective prayer of a righteous man is very much. What's a righteous man? Well, we can go all the way back to the door. Uh, did he meet Jesus? Uh, did he have a blood covenant? Uh, did he confess his sins to the love? Uh, has he sent and submitted himself to a fivefold ministry in this type of way? To get an understanding how God wants to operate. That's a righteous man. Is he in the word? He got revelation. This is why the prayer's not working. See, I'm telling you guys, when you go to God and say, God, man, God, I don't get it. People ain't this stuff. I see people say stuff and do stuff. And then they're going to compare God to what people are doing. Now, I don't know more. I compare God to what his word said. I don't look at people no more. I realize a lot of people don't want to do God. They want to do them and believe in God. It's a difference. Now watch this. We got to close. I'll finish this up later. I got a lot more. I haven't got to the, the, the to God, the Ark. 
But when you lay the head of Jesus across, when you first walk in, the first thing we showed you in the gate, Jesus is the way. Jesus is written right here. The next thing is the altar. Then the lever. Then you have the, uh, the, the prayer of incense is sitting at the back door of this one and then to each side representing the cross. All that stuff they had. People, oh, I'm going to learn Hebrew. I'm going to learn Greek. Don't matter. These people knew all that and, didn't, and they missed Jesus. It's not about that. The biggest thing is you crucify. The hardest thing, crucify your flesh, submit your ways unto the Lord, and all your ways acknowledge him, and give up your life and die daily. That is the hard part that you don't want to do. All the other stuff you want to do, antics, trying to do for God, that's not why. You have to die and get in order. It's already said, he says, I already got a plan. Here's my plan right here. I show you the end. So again, he just showed you the first mega church. Three million people in service, doing things the way I say do it, winning every victory because they were toting Jesus around with them. That's why you have victory in you because you're going to tote Jesus around with you, but you have to do the same stuff in order. Stay in order. Stay connected to the vine. You know, you got Jesus inside. You the same thing. They tote on the shoulders. You tore it in them. It says it's going to be on you, but one day, it's going to be in you. We are that one day. Jesus is inside us. I <laughs> praise God. Isn't this, isn't this awesome? I think it's fat. I mean, I'm just flabbergasted about seeing Jesus all throughout every book of the Bible. He's there. And then guess what I said? My favorite verse now is, I'm the God like another. I did show you the end. From the beginning, I told you this is how it's going to be. It's going to be Jesus hanging out with you guys, <laughs> making sure they won every battle as long as they did what Jesus said. They took that tabernacle and they set it up the way God. They did everything and they told anybody, anybody came against them. They were done. That's why God says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Why? Because you're going to do things in what? Order. <laughs> order. God looking for some people to get stuff stuff in order. Next week we'll finish, we'll talk again about the um the tabernacle inside and the Ark of the Covenant because he goes on and on and on about how Jesus is all over. Praise God. <laughs> but I am out of time, but I'm not out of word. Uh we'll continue next week. Just as God says, um, where are we going? Where are we going back to our future, guys? That's nothing new, so I want you to freak it out. Shake your peace to let you know that you mean to tell me that I'm like playing like out a road that's already been set out for me? Yep. With provisions? Yep. With power? Yes. People you're supposed to meet, place you're supposed to go? Already done. Already done. Already done. This is why I do this. I hope it ain't boring. I'm trying to let you know, guys, <laughs> this is a fixed fight, really. All you got to do is just yield. You got to yield. Spend time with, shut up, be quiet, trying to make, how, how you can do this? And when you go, I don't care how you're going to do it. I just know he's going to do it. I just want to get in his presence and his will, God, what you want me to do. I'm waiting for my next orders. And then everything's going to be okay. Don't let nobody freak you out because they can't see what you see. They ain't spending time with God. I ain't going to let nobody get me all rowdy. Not, no, 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 they're not, they're not spending time with God. And they're going to get you all hyped. Did you see? Did you hear? Did you see? Did you hear? I heard and seen everything you seen. Has nothing to do with my assignment. Absolutely nothing. What soldier go, you know, start talking about the cares of this world while he's on this assignment? No, no. Praise God. Amen. Well, Father, we thank you for the word <laughs> that came forth tonight. May you continue to give us revelation and understanding of who we are in Christ. Where we're going is back to our future. Jesus is with us. We are the tabernacle of the Lord. And Lord, as long as we do things in an orderly fashion, the way you desired in your word, Lord, we should have the victories, just like the, the children of Israel, days of old, had every major victory because they just obeyed everything that you said to do. And Father, I just thank you, Lord, for revealing this to this group right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Give God a hand clap. I'm telling you, I never knew nothing about the tabernacle.